Whoa. Whoa. Jeez, now we have two good hairdos in this interview. <laughs> Someone left us this beautiful Charlie Brown Christmas tree, but we don't know who it was. Was it Gino Retta? Was it Brendan and Connor? Was it Michael Landsberg? We don't know, but it's here and we're mailing it in. We're not trying that hard. This is the last show of the week. Not our last show before no, Christmas, though. No. We will be here uh, Sunday night and Monday night as per the Bell Media policy. Now, Dan, <laughs> uh, we have an all-Canadian matchup to kick off the show, and the Calgary Flames are wearing some uniforms that are just, mwah, beautiful. They are beautiful, and this is a huge trip for the, uh, the Habs. Second of a seven-game trip. Uh, yeah, seven Let's games. Let's look at it. Okay, those, those are also beautiful units. Yeah, Carey Price has won four of his last five starts, allowing just seven goals over that stretch. There's those unis. Oh, my gosh. First period, Habs turn it over. There's Lindholm to Matthew Kachuk. Just his third goal in his last 16 games, but the Flames open and, the scoring. And Lanny was in the building. Yeah, so they're, they're wearing home. Why can't every team wear home whites? Just in Calgary, just go to these uniforms. Just do it. No. no one will say no. Kachuk returns the favor. Lindholm is 15th. Flames score power play goal. 2 nothing. Calgary after one. Second period. Kachuk goes through his leg. Stopped by Price. That is his signature move. Hey, that could have been on Wednesday's top 10 signature moves that really confused a lot of people. Minutes later. Shea Weber to Brennan Gallagher. Beats Dave Riddick from a terrible angle. Uh, Riddick wearing a... Uh, Oh, brown goalie pads. They are not horsehair pads, I can assure you of that. That's Gallagher's dad. He's like, whatever. Just over three minutes later, Arturi Lekkonen into Joel Armia. Armia's 12th. One off his career high. It's tied at two after two. Third period. Armia forces a turnover. A chance to match his career high in goals. Big save, Dave. Brett Kulak, a great chance. It misses the net. Play continues. Max Domi turns it over. Johnny Goudreau finds Oliver Shillington. Shillington scores. Beats Price for his first. Calgary regains the lead. After Riddick came up huge at the other end. Just over eight minutes to go. Nick Cousins. Cuzzy. Tipped by Nick Suzuki is seventh. This game's tied at three. And they needed overtime. Leas Lindholm, great chance in the slot. All alone! Stopped by Price. Max Domi picks it up, starts the other way. Max Domi, this is shades of Guy Lafleur. Scores. The overtime winner. Habs have won five of six, and they've started this lengthy road trip of perfect 2-0. Canucks hosting the Golden Knights. Vancouver trying to snap a three-game losing skid, which included a loss to Vegas on Sunday. Adam Gaudet. Trying to win a foot race. Centering pass off Mark andre Furry skate. Right to Antoine Roussel. Roussel, four goals in just eight games since returning from a torn ACL. Opens the scoring for the Knucks. Still in the first. JT Miller. Canucks are up 2-0 here. Turns it over. Jonathan Marshall so is going to bounce on that loose puck and score. Not bounce on it, he's going to jump on it. It would be weird if he just bounced on it. A few shifts later, Miller creates a turnover. He's stopped, but Elias Pettersson, EP40, as producer Tim likes to call him, 15 goals on the year. Vancouver up 3-1 after one. Midway through earlier, two, Nick Holden cross-checking Josh again, Levo into the boards. Levo with his back turned straight to the Holden. dressing room. Holden, Van no pedaling. Right no penalty. Very Holden. next shift. Mark Holden picks up the loose puck the takes the feed Holden. from Mark Stone. What a turn of and that shot goes off Bo Horvat skating in. Bo Horvat. Holden ties it at three, and that's where we are in the third. Hawks and Jets, Chicago. 
six and one in the second game of back to backs this year. Oh, Coming it's up, terrifying music. Four one loss to Colorado Wednesday. This is the Knight Rider music opening minute. Patty Kane to Alex Greenlander for a tap in. Kane playing his 939th career game for the Hawks. Under the bar. Moves him to seventh on the team's all-time list. Second period. Mark Shifley to Kyle Cotter. Side of the net. Rob Lanner. Shifley, seven goals, five assists during his seven-game point streak. Uh, nothing in this one, no points, so that streak is over. 30 saves through two. Hawks, 2 nothing in the third. Nick Ehler spots Tucker Kuhlman in the slot. One-timer. Kuhlman's second goal of the season breaks up the shutout. But uh, Chicago then made it 3-1. And that's where Patty Kane with three and a half left. All alone. Rister pass Connor Hellebuck. Kane with a goal and three assists. It's his 12th career game with four more points. He's got eight in his last four as the Hawks win this one in Winnipeg. Tough loss for the Jets. During their morning skate, this is a tough moment for Craig Anderson of the Sens. Took a shot off the mask for Brady Kachuk. Did you see that? He lost a tooth. He lost a tooth. So I guess we know what he'll be asking for this Christmas. A different, a different teammate than Brady Kitchuk. <laughs> uh, Marcus Hogberg between the pipes for the Sens. Craig Smith robbed by Hogberg. Sens goalie still looking for his first career victory. Did I mention they were playing the Preds? I don't think I did. That was good. That was really nice. Jumped to the third 3-1 Sens. J.G. Pajot to Brady Kitchuk. Off the post and in. Great pass from Pajot. Look at this. Threading the needle. And 4-1 uh, cents now, 4-2. Preds man advantage, Ryan Ellis looking for Ryan Johansson. It's off his skating in, and now it is a one-goal game. And then Roman Yossi, beyond underrated. That is the captain of your Nashville Predators, and he has tied the game at four and sent this one to overtime. But fear not, Sens fans. Anthony Duclair. Duclair. For Shabbat. Back to Duclair. Scores! Number 20 is the overtime winner for Anthony Duclair. And of course, Chris Cuthbert on the call. It doesn't get better. Duclair matching his career high with his 20th of the season. Hogberg, first career win. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome feeling. Uh, I mean, uh, we have a couple plays uh, that we would like to run through and uh, just saw an opening there and uh, it worked last time, so might as well try it again. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, just happy uh, the way things uh, have been going this year and I want to keep going. Um, you know, I think I obviously got a lot of uh, hockey left. And, um, you know, team's playing well at home and um, you got to improve a bit on the road, but personally, I think, uh, you know, confidence is pretty high. And, Hey. You like stats? Good. Here's one for you. Three Lakers and Bucks meeting Thursday night. Just the third game in NBA history that featured two teams 20 games over 500 before January 1st. That's a stat. LeBron, he's dominated against Giannis Adetokounmpo in their 18 career matchups. Giannis, he still can't believe how LeBron is still very good. He's about turning 35 this month. And he's moving like that, playing like that, just, you know, playing smart. And it's insane. He say what he's able to do, but he's LeBron James. You know, he's different. He's alien. Opening quarter of a potential NBA Finals preview. James rejected by Giannis. Yeah, he's got uh, a long reach. Second quarter off the spin, Giannis. Finishes with the easy two-handed dunk. Lakers down 19 at the half, third quarter. Giannis, Anthony Davis right there in his grill. Hits the deep three. Shot clock winding down. Nearly the same spot. Giannis, fourth triple of the game. Fourth quarter, out of Tecumpo. Pulls up. Yeah, he can sink threes. Hits a career-high fifth three. And I don't know, you tell me, Giannis perhaps gesturing to King James that he has the crown now? I don't know. A late fourth quarter for Giannis missed. LeBron, feed to Davis, finishes 
right next to the Greek Freak. James passed Gary Payton for ninth on the all-time assist list, but the Bucks with a statement win against the Lakers. Triple double for LeBron. And then another terrific game Thursday. Rockets, Clippers, Kawhi Leonard. Smooth. He scored 20 or more in four straight. Goes four for five for 11 points in the first quarter. Gonna bank this one in. James Harden came in averaging 44 points over his last four games. Patrick Beverly, he is intense. He is a talker. Uh, Harden three turnovers in the first half. Beverly also played four seasons with Harden in Houston. So he knows how to get under his skin. Patrick Beverly, you hate playing against him. You wish he was on your team. Final minute, Harden from long range, air ball. Yeah. And while Harden gets back, Leonard pushing up court and hits from the top of the key. Clippers in control. Hey. You still into stats? Good. Two. That's how many pre-tournament games Team Canada will play before they kick off the World Juniors Boxing Day against the U.S. First of the two went Thursday against the Swiss. Is that a stat? That's a stat. That's a number, too. Hey, uh, Team Canada opted to walk from their hotel to the rink. Turned out it was 28 miles. <laughs> Canada scored there. Part of hockey in these days, you know, playing for your Canada, the World Juniors, you know, it's a lot of competition here, but I want to make sure I put my best foot forward out here today, and I feel like I'm just going to give it my all. Yeah, that's Dawson Mercer. He's one of the players on the bubble. He finished with a goal. Started the second. Aiden Duda takes it right to the net. And Liam Foody bangs in Canada's second goal. Comes just eight seconds into the period. Dudas is a fourth round pick of the Kings in 2018. Joel Hofer took the net for Canada in the first half of the game. His last save of this one was on his uh, teammate with the Portland Winterhawks. The Blues draft pick didn't give up a goal in 30 minutes of play. Nico Daz has a 9.39 save percentage with Guelph, takes over uh, in net for Canada. Third period. Valentin Nussbaumer to the net. Daz makes the stop. He went undrafted in June, didn't give up a goal in this game. Bone Byron. And from, uh, from a point, takes the pass from Dudas. Scores. Byron is the Avs' fourth overall pick in the 2019 entry draft. Dawson and Hofer split the shutout. Canada wins their first pre-tournament game, but as part of the pre-tournament rules, both teams participate in overtime and a shootout. They're there. Why not? Canada's missed nine straight shootout attempts in this tournament. First shooter, Alexis Lafreniere. It's not scores. scores. After Dawes gave up a goal in the first shooter, gives up a, a second straight goal. Final shooter, Switzerland needs to score again to end it. Again, this is none of this matters. Dawes gives up his third goal of the shootout. Switzerland wins the shootout. By a score of three to two. Um, Dudas' first game action since back on November 29th due to a hand injury. Liam Foody scored Canada's second goal of the game. He has 26 points in 20 games for London in the OHL. Imagine how Dale Hunter is your coach. It'd be so fun. I mean, not for the players, <laughs> but Can for me as a viewer. Canada's second and final pre-competition game that goes Monday. Fans, remember, they knocked out the Canadians in last year's quarterfinal. Coverage, note the start time, early Monday. Still to come, bit by the injury bug again. The Raps lose a trio, but for how long? We've got the details next. You're watching the Jay and Dan Show on TSN. Bruins were hosting the Islanders, two of the top three teams in the Eastern Conference, though Boston is struggling. They've lost six of seven. Ryan Pollock coughs it up. And Unders, New York, capitalizes on the turnover. Human behavior.
Human behavior. One nothing Bruins after one. More from the Icelandic Boyle. princess. Pressured by Lenny. Picks it back up again. Short pass for McAvoy who creeps in. Spins around the goal. Sends it back door. And Varlamov reached over and got it with the glove. Yeah, Bjork couldn't score there. Sorry, Icelandic princess. Varlamov. The save of the year. Then Zdeno Charlotte's see not a good clearing attempt. Johnny Boychuk gets it along the boards and finds Matthew Barzell for his 14th. So Isles up 2-1, third period, Bruins 5-on-3, power play. Tory Krug, boomsies. We're tied, Krug's fifth, overtime solved nothing. Everyone take a drink. Shootout time. Isles up one zip. Matthew Barzell, shelf on Tuka Rask. To get the Islanders a goal from David Pofferbach. leading goal scorer with speed. Oh boy, that was nifty. Bruins within one. Isles failed to score. Brad Marchand to keep the shootout going. No, he cannot do it. The Isles take it in the shootout. The Islanders. Wild and Yotes, Taylor Hall's first home game at Gila River Arena. He's not very familiar with the place. Taylor Hall making his way with his teammate Carl Soderberg. First time coming into the building for a game, and you, you got to help a brother out. But watch Carl, he left him just keep going. <laughs> that is a bad <laughs> teammate right there. Did you see in the distance? Santa works at the Gila River Arena. First period off a turnover. Shen Dvorak spots Hall. Backhand pass to Phil Kessel, scores his eighth of the year. Hall's second assist in two games. His team's down one in the third, and. Uh, Here's Wild third. Doobie, doobie, doo. Devin Dubnik, first game since November 16th as his wife deals with an illness. Comes up with a huge save. Uh, Hall crashed into the boards. Minnesota wins 8-5. to five. Jack Eichel's 17-game point streak. The NHL says it's over. Not because he didn't score against the Flyers Thursday, but because he didn't play. Eichel listed as out due to an upper body injury. Our hockey insider Darren Drager said on Twitter that it sounds like the flu, which is as good a time as any to remind you about Drager's new Crave TV series, Diagnosis Twitter. It's television's number one new medical drama about a hockey insider with no medical training whatsoever. Good doctor, more like bad doctor. Diagnosis Twitter, your next binge watch confirmed. Four goals Michael actually game. took the pregame warm up. Jonesy again, but he couldn't go, not feeling good. And That's the 76ers game Wednesday. Oscar Lindblom made his first public appearance since being diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma last week. Thursday, he posted a message on Instagram for all the support he's received during the course of the past week. Will not play for the remainder of this season. 2-0 Philly in the first. Now on the power play, Kevin Hayes to Matt Niskanen. Niskanen to Kevin Hayes. Kevin Hayes to Niskanen. Open net. 3 nothing Philadelphia Flyers. Nothing going right for Buffalo. 5 nothing. James Van Riemsdyk, the pass of 10 for Sean Couturier. Goes off Rasmus Ristolainen and skating in. Second of the game for JVR. It's 6 zip. Was involved there. Then in the second, Cross Travis Konecki takes a whack at Rasmus Dahlin. Dahlin retaliates with a high stick on Konecki. Dahlin gets the cross-checking penalty in addition to a slash of the previous play. Konecki a cross-checking minor. Yeah, Sabres were frustrated. What can you say? 6-1 was the final. All right, let's go walk over to the other set. Did both those teams have the exact same record? 22-10-3? Are you asking me? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Dan. One game off. They were one game off. This is exciting because we have, of course, our poinsettias and our uh, the gifts over there that I wrapped for you. But there's some bad news, Dan, if you're a Raptor fan. It's pretty light. Pascal Siakam will be sidelined indefinitely. He strained his groin after an awkward landing in the fourth quarter against the Pistons on Wednesday. Siakam, of course, having a terrific season, over 25 points a game. Now, in addition to that injury, Mark Gasol, here you see him, the hamstring. First quarter of the game, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, who's a close personal friend of myself and Dan, 
reported earlier Thursday that Gasol would miss a period of weeks because of that injury. And then Norm Powell suffered a partial dislocation of his left shoulder after colliding with the Pistons player like Siakam and Gasol. Powell's played all 27 games for Raps this season. Now all three are out indefinitely. Jack Armstrong. This has been a tremendous run for the Toronto Raptors. They've been relatively healthy. Uh, they've gone through a lot, but nonetheless come through the other side and been really, really good. Uh, so this has been a definite real a challenge for their organization right now. Uh, but nonetheless, when you look at the Raptors, I think they always seem to come up with a way to find ways to win. And I have a lot of confidence in Nick Nurse and Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster in terms of their roster composition and how they do business that they'll find a way to do it. So the players on this roster right now, they understand, hey, man, next man up mentality, they're going to have to do it. Hey. Jack seems sad. Okay, time to pull up your socks. That's what you have to tell the team. That's right, and get ready for the Washington Wizards because they're in town on Friday. Dan, our friend Justin Kutcher, who's the Wizards play-by-play -play guy, contacted you for some fine places to eat in the city of Toronto. And that's why I turned to you and I say, what should I tell them? <laughs> and then I told them, Tim Hortons. That's what I said. I said, just find your local Timmy's and get it yourself a sandwich. You'll be ready to go for the Raptors and Wiz Friday, 7 Eastern. Uh, Kyle Lowry and Matthew Thomas traded in their sneakers for ballet shoes Thursday, although you don't have to wear ballet shoes for the Nutcracker or be a cannon doll. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I hope, I hope he doesn't kill me. <laughs> I'll try not to. Okay, let's see uh, their performance. So they, uh, they got out there, uh, help with the cannon. They got to tell him to fire it. And then they got to go over to the side of the stage. So very, very nice huh. ballet debut. Nicely done at the uh, Opera House. Uh, Dan, you're going to be going to the Nutcracker uh, Saturday. I go every year. Love it. Uh, I cry every year. Do you remember when you and I were Cannon Doll? Sure do. Oh, man. This was like 2012? We're not exactly sure. Um, I don't know if they... Like, everyone wears the same costume. There's... It's like four yeah. costumes in there. Yeah, so you're wearing Kyle's costume. Yeah. Uh, I'm wearing Thomas's costume, so. <sighs> that uh, costumes, yeah, those costumes have been through a lot. That of Nutcracker humans. production that they do in Toronto, go. It's good. And now for the segment everyone's yeah. talking about in the press boxes. Yes. It's time for NHL Scrub Lurkers. Unbelievable. Hey, Chase. Um, you know. Kristen was in it. Yep. Scrum lurkers. <sighs> it's our gift to the nation, is what it is. Still the cup. And now it's time for the Jay and Dan Year in Review. Today we travel back to September 4th. And that's why we're proud to announce that our own Dan O'Toole now has his own cereal. When you reach for a raisin-based cereal in the morning, reach for Raisin Dan. The only raisin cereal that's only raisins. Raisin Dan. Whoa! That's too many raisins. This has been the Jay and Dan 2019 Year in Review. That was fun. Yeah. 
Incidentally, a box of golden raisin Dan is wrapped up over right over beside you there. For you to open up under the tree on Christmas morn. <laughs> You'll have a delicious bowl of raisin Dan with your family. <laughs> Who wants raisin Dan, kids? <laughs> According to reports, including one by our good friend Ken Rosenthal, free agent first baseman Justin Smoke has signed a one-year, $5 million deal with the Brewers. He spent the last five seasons with the Jays after being claimed off waivers by the team in 2014. What a waiver pickup that was. 22 home runs, 61 RBIs in 121 games last season. The only position player left from the 2015-2016 Blue Jays playoff run. And he'll be missed. Well liked Fan by favorite. the media, the fans, yeah. teammates. Yeah, a true pro. Yeah, tough one. I mean, when they got him, it was kind of like, eh. But, man, did that ever turn out great. Uh, the Patriots, they're going to face the Bills. Big AFC showdown on Saturday. Both teams have secured a spot in the playoffs, and with a win, the Pats can clinch their 11th straight division title. It's a big game for, for, uh, for both teams, so going to go out there and try to play our best. This is a uh, you know great team that's been playing really well all year. they got a great defense. And uh, it's going to be a tough challenge. You work all year to put yourself in a position of you know, playing a game like this where you can win the division. So that's, you know, couldn't say that in week four or week six or week eight, whatever it was. Well, we're saying that now. So now's the time for us to play and coach our best football. That's what we're all here for. Sometimes I just think Coach Belichick can't open his mouth that wide. And that's why he speaks that way. Dak Prescott, he's been limited at practice for the last two days. He sustained a sprained AC joint in his shoulder. And the Cowboys win over the Rams last Sunday. Dallas can clinch their second straight NFC East title with a win over Philadelphia this Sunday. Dak, you playing? I'm getting better. Uh, simple as that. Uh, the mobility function in it is, uh, it's all improving. That's the kids, the goal. I'll be good to go Sunday. Yeah, it's frustrating. Uh, I'm a guy that likes to be in the action. Uh, I don't like to sit back, don't like to... Uh, take any reps off, but uh, it's good mentally. It's always fun um, just, just challenging yourself, and right now it's just a mental challenge. So uh, same preparation in the game plan, if not doubling down since I, since I don't get those physical reps, uh, but I'll be ready to go. We have a triple header for you on Saturday beginning at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time, all with playoff implications. You've got to watch it! When we come back, Worn out from your trip to the mall? Get ready to enjoy a relaxing edition of the Jannies. Scarborough Mall is just across the street here. Janny time, guys. If you're watching Jane Dan, Jannies is a combination of my name and Dan's name. Jannies. Giannis Antetokounmpo throws down the slam. Big win over the Lakers. Kevin Hayes, great hesitation. All the Sabres watch him, and then Matt Niskanen finishes. Finish him. Little Harlem Globetrotters. Did you take, hear me take a sip of something there? No. Marcus Hogberg picked up his first NHL win on Thursday night. Rob's Craig Smith there. KHL, Linus Videl spins. Toronto has a team in the KHL? <laughs> That's Corbin Knight. Corbin Knight scoring. Of course, he was on LA Law. Cor I'm sorry, that was Corbin Burnson. Corbin Burnson. Oh, what a nice passing play. Nikita Kucherov to Alex Kalorn. But the Lightning, despite outshooting the Stars, took the loss on Thursday. Corbin Knight used to play in the AJHL for the Okotoks Oilers. Okotoks, nice little town. It's from Oliver, BC. No lacrosse attempt there for Tyler Ennis, Dan. Ah, this is Anders Bjork. One-timer, Simeon Varlamov. Huge glow. Oh, wow, that was a great save. I always wonder, is Bjork on the money in Iceland? I know the money is, has been devalued. But is she on the money? One of the bills? One of the notes? We'll never know. New York's always on the money. Nathan McKinnon. Uh, James Reimer gets a piece of the blocker, and the puck ends up in his pants. And as Dan said, 
That meant we were talking puck pants. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's that whole segment of the show right there. Tim kept it really concise. Yeah. Um, Bjork still performing? I think so, yeah. She put out an album last year, I think. Really? Yeah. Bjork still here. Bjork is still doing her thing. Iceland's most exciting export. They know about that in Gimli, Manitoba, don't you, Gimli? Largest Icelandic population outside of Iceland. First play of the day, interested to see this one. It's from Atlanta, where Santa goes down. Oh, no, Santa. Christmas is canceled. Santa, like he was look toasted. And who knew that Santa was a Hawks fan? Oh, that's so sad. I hope Santa's okay. Highlight of the night from Ottawa, Roman Yossi. Despite the Sens victory, it's the Preds to get the highlight of the night. That's your Sens captain wearing number 59. Just signed a massive new contract extension. Beautiful play. Roman Yossi. Excellent defense. No you question. blew it. Our errors is an all-J edition. During the draft through, you said that Canadian goalies Joel Hofer and Nico Dawes shared a shutout. They shared a shutout. <laughs> you said Friday's top 10 will be fans. Successes. Friday's top 10 is always must-see of the week. It is? We're never here Friday, so. Oh, uh, yeah, that's why I don't know that. And then during the top 10, you said James Harrison gave the Browns fan a stone-cold stunner. He suplexed him. Oh, okay. I thought a suplex was more like, you know, like about, yeah, exactly like that. But he kind of, I, but I don't, I know it wasn't a Stone Cold Stunner, because I don't really know what that is. Can we roll that in, Tim? What's it stuff? <laughs> Tim, not ready. Just a anyway. reminder, those are our suits. And a reminder that uh, we are here Sunday. We've got uh, the post-game show after the Sunday Nighter. And we're here Monday with the post-game show after the Monday Nighter. Then we'll be off for a week. Then we'll be off till January the 1st, where we'll have some pretty cool surprises for you. And I'm not even joking. Huh. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's right, Dan. Get ready for it. Bloop it's Bloop Sloops! Shiavo? Shiavo? That's all the information. Svech, Svech, of second yes. lacrosse style goal. Yes. I don't know how old you are either. You don't age. Spittle your way.